I can't tell. Okay, see the little green lights? Okay. Yeah. We're Two nice. family. Should I, which, I don't even know where the other one is. How do I, how so do, okay, hold on a second. Uh, oh boy. Almost sound. <laughs> there. Okay, now, uh, uh, Um, two family. Hi, two family. Hi, Sherry. Do I still have two time, uh, two live streams? No sound. I've got sound and video. Okay. Um, <coughs> hi, Rock. Rock has sound <coughs> and video. Everyone go over to her house. <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, no. What did you say? What is no for two family? Oh, there you go, sweetie. Hi, Cher. Uh, uh, here come her in New York. Good for you. Um... There I am. Yeah, you're right. Um, where did uh, Sherry go? Sherry. Oh, dear. Okay, let me turn. I don't even know if the sound's up over here. I always, when I go to put the sound up. There. Where did uh, Sherry go? Okay. Um, let me see. Sherry, Sherry. I know she's pink. Um, this is great. Oh, no. They're okay. Back. Back. Uh, We're gonna hit two okay. Okay. It so always is like that. It always is like that. You just went around. Okay. Mm. Two. Okay. Just, just a second. Okay. This is fun. Okay, go for it. You won't hey. be able to hear anything over there. Okay, it wants to be. Okay, uh hi, good evening. Um Let's see. Um, going to talk about what I did with one of the hives. Uh, made some uh, uh, mistake and I was correcting it today. Um, <coughs> do uh, we have our hives with two deeps, and then we put supers on top because of the weight involved with the deeps. Um, I've elected to go to one deep and two mediums on top of them uh, this year. So initially what I did was um, put a medium above the first deep and then put the second deep on top. Uh, I couldn't find a way to do it on um, Google at first. so. Uh, what I'm trying to do is get the top deep off uh, to just have deep super super. Um, so I waited too long and I've got the queen laying eggs, laying the brood in the top deep and the bottom deep at the same time. So today I finally found out what I should have done and so now 
uh, I went down there. This is this is one hive, um, and I have a deep, two mediums, and another deep. Because the queen was laying in the top deep way up, which is the opposite of what I wanted her to do, um, I had to reverse the two deeps. Um, and in the meantime, I found out that the hive is preparing to swarm. There were swarm cells in both deeps. So um, I have it over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so... <clears throat> So as part of this, I elected to create um, a new hive at, the, at a nuke size, um, which is a small box for those of you that, that don't know. Um, so I took out the uh, swarm cells, which were sealed, two frames from the deep that had those in it, put them in the nuke, and cut out the swarm cell from the other D to try to prevent swarming. Because when you have swarm cells that are sealed, it means there's queens growing in there, and when they come out, your hive's gonna swarm. Um, here is one swarm cell. Wait, I don't know how to I know, you know what? We should put it on the back of um, paper. This worked for my other stuff. Here you go. Yeah. Uh, Maybe you can see it better here. Um, this is, you can see it's sealed at the end. And they're long. They're typically made at the top or the bottom of the frames. So this is a fairly substantial one. Um, you can see. So... Uh, so anyway, so the idea is you get rid of the swarm cells. So I was electing, I elected to um, try to create a nuke with two of the swarm cells, and uh, I'm going to hope that works out. So uh, the procedure I used was to get the queen, because the queen was in the top deep. I reversed the deeps to put the queen on the bottom with the brood that was still remaining left the two medium supers in the middle, put the deep that was on the bottom on the top, and put a queen excluder underneath it, which is what I should have done to begin with. So that'll keep the queen out of the top deep. And once all the brood hatches up there, um, I'll remove the top deep um, to get where I want to be and add another super for honey. So that's that's kind of uh, it's kind of what I did today. Um, do we have a lot of questions? Or? Yes. What were you just holding? Yeah, I can. I, I can. was just holding this one. So okay. Um, Is that a question? Just a second. Raquel, um, a swarm cell. Hey, sweetie, <laughs> when you go like into a hive, like bees build up, okay? When they're in a hive, they if um if they don't see anything in there, I mean, see a way where they can grow, they're gonna leave. And I'll get to that in a minute. As I said before, and you you may not have been here. Let me feel a little of this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. It, we use 10 frame hives, okay? And so if you're going through doing a hive inspection, which you're especially in this time of year, which you're really supposed to do quite a bit, and, and you're looking on the sides and you're not seeing anything, the bees aren't active there, it means absolutely nothing because they just may never go to the sides. They, by habit, I don't know what it is, they go up. So in this particular case, what we had done was, because both of our backs have seen better days, um, we decided to um, change over to medium-sized boxes, also known as 
honey supers. The short uh, term for that is supers, okay? Um, because that's where technically your bees will put your honey. Uh, the traditional setup of a hive is a deep, deep meaning it's, it's this, it's like tall, it's deep. Two deeps on the bottom with 10, 10 frames. And in those 10 frames, the queen bee goes around and around and she's constantly laying eggs. And you have your nurse bees who are taking care of them. And you have your uh, worker bees that you have your ten attendants that are taking care of the queen while she's doing all this. She never leaves the hive. So they're feeding her and everything else. And then you have your worker bees that are bringing in honey and storing it around where she's laid the eggs so that the nurse bees will have something to feed the, um, the larva, baby bees while they're maturing and, and everything else the drones that are in there aren't doing anything okay that's why people really try to get rid of their drones but that's another topic which i can go into so what we had done was we had two deeps and we said oh gee not too much is happening on top let's just split them so we put a deep and we put a honey super a smaller one much easier to lift and then put the other deep on top. Well, we figured out what we did was we confused the bees. The bees on the bottom looked up and only saw honey. They found that confusing. There's no place else for their queen to lay, okay? So what did they have in the bottom? I forget, they had, they just weren't happy down there. They had, well, they had a super seizure, super, Two supersedure cells okay. and a swarm cell. Let me explain. A supersedure cell, they're on the frame. So if your frames are flat, they go in your hive like this, okay? And so they'll be on this part of your frame. And you'll see a big, where's that thing? You'll see something like, you'll see one or two or three of these there. That means they're not happy with the queen. Either she's got an attitude, they don't like her attitude, or she's not laying property properly and when you look at the brood pattern which is the way she's laying the eggs it's supposed to be all the way across smooth it's going spot 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 blank spot 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 that means she's running out of eggs they're sick of her and they want another queen so that's their way of telling you they're going to get rid of her as soon as one of these hatch and when one of these hatch it's really an amazing thing uh one of them hatches and they go take care of her, <laughs> okay? And then um, they take care of the other two before they hatch too, right? If they happen, I, I did hear this once, if they happen to hatch um, at the same time, they fight it out. And there's a really high pitched sound that maybe you can find on YouTube that um, where the one that hatches, it's like, ah, oh, you know, and she's encouraging any other queen bees to come to her, and they do, and then she does them in. And then she does the mating flight. She goes up, I forget how many uh, feet is it in the air? A few. few. Oh, right, this is where the drones come in. All drones do is fertilize the queen and eat. They, they don't, that's all they do. Grizz? <laughs> Grizz? I know what Grizz is thinking, so just sit on it, Grizz. But that's all a drone does. Okay, so the drones will go up and they'll mate with the queen. And then she only mates once. That's enough for eternity, for her life, just about, right? Yeah. Well, she mates one time. One time. With 14 to 30 drones. Yeah, with 14 or 30 drones. Ooh. Anyway, so then she comes back down in the hive and then she starts laying her eggs. So that's what was happening in the bottom and something went terribly wrong i think the bees were confused they didn't like her they had super seizures and then they had a swarm cell on the bottom because they looked up and saw honey that's as far and they thought well, where's she gonna lay it's time for us to leave and go find something else the hive the deep above that had nothing but the top board which is you know the board that goes over the top of the hive and so now they're out of room. So they're looking up and seeing the same thing. I don't know if there's a queen in the top. Yeah, that's, that's something we gotta check. There was a queen in the top. And a, 
Yeah. I had to reverse him. We had to reverse him. Okay. So way up in the top. Way up in the she's top. Supposed to be in the bottom. Supposed so to be in the bottom. What so I did today, which I just explained yeah. to them, is like she walked the right back in the yeah, She walked right by all the honey. So the two deeps are together. Okay. Um, and put on some more supers and. Uh, now they'll look up and they'll say, oh, we can stay here for eternity, especially since we took off the swarm cells. Um, What's important to note is if I missed a swarm cell, they're going to swarm. They're going to swarm. And the they're fact gonna, that they sealed off. some of these swarm cells, usually that everybody says, once a hive decides to swarm, they're going to swarm no matter what no matter you what. do, unless you yeah. break the hive in half mm -hmm. and, you know, break it into pieces. Um, I yeah. I should mention something. If if for those of you that don't know the different sizes we're nice. talking about, a deep is nine and nine sixteenths inches deep. That's the depth. Whereas a medium is six and five eighths inches. So you're talking about a three inch difference. It makes a lot of difference when you're talking about honey. Um, in a deep, one frame can weigh over seven pounds if it's filled with honey. So when you have a smaller frame in a medium, um, you can a medium might be 60 pounds or 40 pounds of honey, depending, whereas a deep can be 80 to over 100. And um, if you're trying to move a few of those around at the same time, it can really be uh, a stretch. So yeah. those are, that's the difference in sizes. They're both the same length, which is 19 inches. Um, we have a question about do we ever get two types of honey from one uh, hive, but you can think about that. Uh, um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll explain that because our mentor might explain that to us. He has upwards of 100 hives, okay? Um, that's why you see all these different hive tools. And we saw one that um, Big Bear showed on one of his streams. And um, he saw his on Honey Tree Farms. And so I went on Amazon and I got that one and two more that looked anything like it. Because what when bees see any tiny little itsy bitsy space, they fill it up with this stuff called propolis, which is worse than soup would look to me. Mm -hmm. And so to get in there, to, to get these boxes apart, these hive boxes apart, and to lift off the frames and to see what's going on in there, you got to first separate them. And, and that's a lot of work depending upon how um, really, vigilant, whatever, how much they want to uh, keep you out. They just fill up everything with propolis. Um, and it makes it very hard to get apart. This particular hive, what was it, two hours? <laughs> um, well, including, yeah, including, including setting up the nuke. But there's, that's way too long to be in a hive. In a so hive, this yeah. was just um, an we, unusual um, situation trying to correct um, an earlier okay. misstep. Um, and, we, um, um, and the hive, this hive is filled with bees. It's got four boxes. The two big ones and the two smaller ones mm -hmm. that we spoke of. Um, each one of these boxes is filled with bees. So, um, and we also had a lot of wind here today, and the bees don't like wind. No, they don't like. That we had gusts over thirty to forty miles an hour. They don't like it, and so um, I had my hands full. Uh, they weren't really happy with me today. No. Um, in fact, I had to kill one. Yes, which is for him, that's very traumatic. Not and, traumatic. But, <laughs> well, he but it was a first. It was a first. They generally and, say and, that, and, and and I don't like to either. <laughs> that's then why do you carry raid all the time? No, I'm just kidding. Hey, I have to let him know who's in charge. Okay. You know, that's just like when we had that stallion. He, we got a miniature. I'm not going up the subject. Let's, we let's, got a, we had a miniature horse show that was a stallion. And I was here when they delivered that thing. And the guy gives me the whip and says, you got to let him know who's in charge. I've never been around a horse before. I'm like, oh, you're yeah, right. <laughs> well, he had to deliver one. I'm over there. in the barn throwing things like this, looking for something to convince this horse that um, 
yeah, I'm in charge, but oh, I, I'm telling you that that was a struggle. Anyway, anyway on this okay, one so day, moving on on this one day to to stay on the topic here. Um, okay, on the one. Here's the ask again. The they generally say that a bee is not supposed to pursue you more than about 15 feet from the hive. Otherwise, it's mm. too aggressive or too defensive, depending on your choice of language. Um, but this one, I decided I had to get away from the hive to let them calm down for a little bit. Um, I would have calmed them. And this one, well, actually it was two or three of them, followed me for at least 50 feet. So I had really made friends with them. Um, I managed to get two of them to stop. And then this one just persisted. And uh, I looked at her and I said, look, if you don't stop, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. She didn't understand English. And okay. um, so I, she was up in front of me and I There's just uh, smashed her. There's that little sound. Which okay. is the first time I've ever done that. Rock, rock out. Where's that little thing? And then I'll what, get to this? the one about the, yeah. This one song? Rock out. Don't hold it too hard. I'm not going to hold it hard. If it's on, this is your frame. Okay. If it's on the side, it's supersedure. See, whatever. Supersedure. Whatever. Yeah. And they're, they don't like their queen. Okay, and if it's on the bottom of the frame, you'll know because you'll pick up the frame and you'll go, what's this? And a lot of times there's more than one or two. Usually if they're going to swarm, there's at least six. Well, yeah. And um, that means they've run out of room. There's nowhere for them to grow and they're going to leave. This particular hive of ours, it's... It's like about, I mean, you oh, just, just bees everywhere. <laughs> well, we, I, I don't know. We did the I, right I, thing. It came through the winter very okay, well, healthy. So um, we did all the right stuff. Yeah, we so did all the right stuff. Now we've um, got, uh, a, you know, a Pope, very hi, healthy hive. Um, okay, two types of honey. Um, I'll, I can address that. Oh, well, all our honey is mixed together. Yeah, we don't we, do, we don't okay. so far. Um you would something we didn't touch on last week and maybe i did i don't know a lot of beekeepers are very secretive about where their hives are because they compete and um a woman i took a class my um college whatever it was over there we had to cut them up and everything um she never tells you where her hives are i will say this she wins first place Every year um, in the New York State Fair, her honey is like, you can, you can see through it. And the lighter and clearer the honey, uh, the more valuable it is. It, it's, it looks like just water that you dip the tea bag in really fast and take it out. I don't really care for the taste, but that's it. She, does, she only uses swarms. That's all she uses, and she's been the first prize winner, and she swears by swarms. She will not use package. She will not use a move. She, don't, she swears by swarms. Um, our mentor, Mike, um, before our bees were producing, I got some honey from him, and it was light. And then the next time I asked, he says, now the honey's going to be dark because they're getting a different type of flower this time of the year. Okay. I don't know what they were getting, but the honey was very dark, almost like carol syrup or, um, so, remember, something like that. It was um, like that. I um, Anyone that has asthma, here's the trick to honey. If you have asthma, COPD, or any type of, you know, situation like that, I don't know if it's a fact, but it helped me a lot. I no longer use my inhalers. If you can eat... A couple of tablespoons of honey a day, but it has to be from within your area because you're you're eating the pollen that the bees have taken in and digested and done something to it, and it helps you. It really does, but that's not just that's not my statement. Okay, someone asked, do we sell the honey? No, too much work. Um, we have been giving it away to certain people. Um, 
I'm going to give some to my sister. I, I don't know. What, I don't know. Maybe I'll um, bring some to the conference. I, I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I, I honestly, last year was a disaster. Yeah, last with year. With the drought, we got almost nothing. With the drought, we got no, almost nothing. And um, the year before, it was like a bumper crop. So so it all depends. So and was there was something else. Oh, there was another question. Where is it here? Um. Whoops. Let me see. Another question here. Um, hmm. So we have like a what, nine? A, I don't even know what we have down there. Down. I'm looking for um. The number of hives. Yeah. Number how many hives? Oh, somebody wants to know how many hives do we have? As right now, we have eleven. Eleven. Um. Uh, we ended the winter with seven. Mm -hmm. We lost. We actually went into the winter with eleven. Mm -hmm. We came out with seven. We purchased three, and we had one swarm. So right. we're back to we added four. So we're back right. to eleven plus the nuke that I created today, which I'll see if that works or not. I, right. That'll take another week to ten days for me to see if that's going to work. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, where, where do I go here? Ooh, okay. Um, it's fun. <laughs> um, I don't work anymore. That's how much fun it is. Uh, we're talking two hours, and we're not talking about the prep. Some of you that were chatting with me um, in other chats, I was I was ready to let I told you I was ready to let some of those hives go. I was I was up here, I was making the sugar water. Um and I mean we used the twenty-five bags of domino sugar. Twenty-five pounds. Whatever. Well twenty-five <laughs> twenty-five bags is a lot of sugar. Well, I'm real laid back. He's so articulate. I love you dude. Anyway, okay, uh -huh. twenty-five how many? Twenty-five, what is it? Get my mouth open. Twenty-five pound bags. Yeah, okay. Keep it that way. I can't even tell you. Um, hold on, I'm doing two or three things here at once. Okay. I can't even tell you how many did I get through? One, two, three, uh, 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 I don't know. Five, uh, six. I don't know. A lot. I don't know. You went through over four. No, it was more than that. And so, one thing I do, if any of you do are beekeepers, um. Because you know you're, I'm making it, and he comes in and here he goes. And I'm putting in this um, bee food, uh, honey bee healthy. If I had not purchased it last year, I would be putting in essential oils. I'm only using it because I had it. I'm going with what's on the um, label. Um, I'm not going to keep spending money for something that's just an essential oil. And, and where, where is it? Um, Rob, Robin talked about that in one of the streams with us. I don't even know what the thing yeah, is. But I had gotten this huge um, jar of it, and that's why um, I um, am using it. When that's out, that's it. I mean, and we. what I did also was I had some of the sugar water left over. I um, put it in like a sprayer. We have like a large sprayer, and I added a whole bunch of water, and I... Um, he we used it to calm the bees down as opposed to you know with the smoker and you know the sprayer and everything uh and i mean our goal i should say my goal originally was 50 hives um i don't know folks the reason um the people in the north have so many beehives is because of winter it, it it's really it, it it's it's a challenge, but that's why so, a lot of people in the north have a lot of hives because you figure, well, you know, we're going to lose them. We're going to lose some. Oh, we know. just got a new report from the New York people. It looks like in our area, um, there was a 48% loss, which is in the western part of New York State, a 48% loss in hives over the winter, which is almost half. That's the last number I just, they just came out with it. 
um, based on reports by beekeepers all around. So we did a little better than that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we did. We, we ours honestly was did. Only, uh, I did the math. I forget. It's less than we did 30 something. We lost 30 something percent. Uh, but it yeah. still hurts when you open a hive and it was all alive and you look in it and maybe yeah dead. that's why you know and then and then again uh, when you have multiple hives like this you can split them you can make an assessment at the end of the year you can join them okay you can do you can um if you're gonna um want to not like starting a nuke you have brood in one that you can move to, to somebody else and you know one thing that um, beekeepers do if you open a hive and they're just rowdy i mean nothing is stopping them not smoke not spray not anything that's the queen's fault she's laying those what's rowdy um bees you have to just get a well it's the genetics the genetics oh. from her you you yeah. have to get another queen from someplace and just get her yeah. out of there you know um I do have videos. Oh, I don't. I mean, I just found out that I can stream all these little itsy bitsy videos together. Like I made one while I was making all of this um, sugar water. Uh, something that I do is I don't know how many gallons of those buckets there. Five. Five gallon buckets. I make it in that. Um, usually, I use five to forty cups. For, to make each one, I use I was using a one to one, which is what we use with the nukes and the weaker hives. Uh, forty cups of sugar, forty cups of water, and the bee food. Now, when we open up and we look at the feeders on the hives, some of them haven't touched it. And if you look in the not on the front, never ever ever, if you're visiting a bee yard or anything like that, do not stand at the opening of the hive. That's not where you want to be. Okay. Well, you can. If you well, you can. Have an interesting experience. <laughs> Just never do that. And I have a habit of um, doing that. Um, yeah, what happens if you? Is, yeah, if you I did that, in the, that all the time. If you stand in the front of the hive and you're looking at it, and you're right in the front. You turn around and you'll see two or three hundred bees stacked up like a JFK. Yeah. Waiting to waiting, land. Yeah, because they're. Bringing in pollen. Just something you don't want. Taking out, you know, it's an interesting place to watch from the side because you, you get to watch them dragging out um, bumblebees. If anybody has children around that like bumblebees, you know, you need to get them <laughs> dragging out, you know, bees that are going in trying to rob them, dead bees, um, things like that. It, it's just a fascinating thing to watch. Um, but like I was saying, you know, you open them up and some of them, you can tell they're not at all interested in the sugar water. They're not touching it. Others, they're all over it and it's almost gone. <laughs> I mean, we're talking a lot of sugar water. So, um, in fact, I don't I can't even use a spoon. I have these big wooden paddles that I use. You'll see it on the video. And something else that I figured out after, you know, stirring and stirring is I um I I use these I'm sure uh these big um, plastic cups that Tupperware makes, I think. You, you, I, I used to use them for making pancakes and you, you know, pour them out and they hold like eight cups. Um, when I, I put my, I know my heart knows. I put my um, 40, I put my two of those of water, which would be 16 cups of water, and 40 cups of sugar and i mix that boiling water okay and i mix it all together and um then when it, it really does mix well then i go over and i get some ice and i you know stir it all up and make ice water and put two of those in for like 16 cups or however many three and it cools it right down so it's able to be jarred um we use all types of jars those beautiful wonderful jars if, if you look some of those jars are like five dollars each and i thought that's not gonna happen here it's too long so we hit the dollar store they have some really cute ones for like a dollar but you know what our the minimum for us is like a gallon jar because our feeders each hold two gallons 
So, like I say, you know, you're down there and every every hive is doing something different, you know. And then we go over to the swarm hive, you know, and they're doing a dance all their own. You know, they're separated. As we said, if you have a bee yard, you, know, you have all your bees there and you're doing fine, you catch a swarm, there's nothing wrong with that, except you want to isolate them. Okay, you want to keep in mind you don't want them near your regular bees. Um, so space, I mean, if you really want to get into this and do all this stuff, space can be an issue. Um, and also water, if it gets hot or something, they will go find their own water. And if your neighbors have pools or you have a pool, and you don't have a source of water, that's where they're going to be. We have ours right near the back row of our pond, which is close to an acre. Um, one more thing. Um, Mark was going to talk about. We sent in our first. Oh, Mark, sent in our first um, sample for the uh, New York State study for mites. Um, we were asked to do this study, and it's really cute. You see the whole map of. Um, I should say interesting. I think everything is cute, but it's interesting. You see all these little pinpricks of where people are sending in bees from, and they're going to have this. Um, collection of information from us. Uh, some of us are the control group. We don't know who they are. And some of us are people that are doing other studies. We don't know who they are. And we have to send these bees in alive. So it, it's kind of interesting, huh? You know, my husband's at the yeah. post office. What are you, you, have, you know how they are at the post office. Do you have anything liquid or perishable or breakable? He goes, no, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I got some bees. They haven't dealt with you this know. before. Um, so they ended up having to call four supervisors yeah. at other stations or post offices, bigger post offices, to find out if they could actually send it, um, it priority, which means on a plane, because they just got instructions that you can no longer send live bees on a plane. Um, which, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing, but um, at any rate, the instructions say you can't, but they went to a supervisor and found out that, um, yes, you can, you can still do that. So uh, that was helpful because for the test, you have to be able to send it where they get it pretty fast. You, you chill the bees and you send them so when you're sending them, they are alive. And they yeah. wanted to get their more or less alive. Uh, it has to do with what they're testing them for. So that was yeah. Fun. It's it's just the idea of getting these bees from around the state. You know what's in your area. Um, I mean, I would say within ten miles of here. And this is a stop I have to make. Um, there's a place that claims they're uh, butchering a cow. How many hours do they claim they do six of these cows? Four? Know, yeah, four know. hours. That's all I'm going to tell you. They, they claim they do four in six hours and only four people. I got to go see this operation. But um, so we have, I said that to say somebody mentioned, was kind enough to mention on the stream, you know, oh, Kitty, it was Kitty saying they were starting to spray for um, Zika. I implore you, even if you don't have bees, if you have chickens or whatever you have, please find out what the heck they're doing in your area. Um, which, which Carolina was that was shut them down last year? Uh, I want to say north? It was either north or north, south. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they said, no, you're not doing anything here. And they didn't. And the other one lost. Oh, no, no. No, it was south. I don't remember. Okay, yeah, but. one of the Carolinas said, no, that's not going to happen here. They have a huge... North beat. Carolina North Carolina, it. yeah. South Carolina didn't. Florida, I mean, this this one woman, I can still see her on television going, yeah, I want that one instead. Now, they claim. <laughs> Here's what they claim. It doesn't happen here, okay, because I don't know, within, I don't know how many hundreds of miles we are. Um, it, it just, we're just in the middle of the... Of the um, Food belt. I mean, they're not spraying. They're not in an upstate New York. Yeah, yeah. Because here we're it's farm so country. Far. You know, like I, I think I put on a chat. Um, 
my girlfriend's son. I mean, he's upward of a thousand acres and he's one of the smaller farmers here. And I said, oh, I can't even think that big. You know, and they're out there and he, you know, they're, they're doing contracts with the government. You know, they're not even selling to um, fruit stands or any of that stuff. You know, their, their contracts are with um, the government and, and big grain people and what he's putting in in the winter and stuff. Um, but um, my thought about that is, you know, they say, well, we're going to tell you if we're going to spray. And I don't know if they're doing chemtrails or spraying or what. So you can cover your animals and keep your animals inside and cover things. Well, what about the plants, the grass, uh, your ponds? Hello. I mean, all that stuff is still out there. So, uh, you know, all you have to do is call your town hall. Uh, I, those of you that are in the city, if you call your city hall or go on the site, they should be able to tell you um, if and when they're spraying. And, you know, I don't know. If there are enough <clears throat> people who have skin in the game in your area, they can stop it. You know, just say, hey, you know, we can't have that. You know, we're talking, you know, but otherwise, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, even your children, I mean, I want to know, you know. Um, on that same topic, am I missing anything? I'll come back for questions. Oh no, you're checking. Yeah, I'm I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Man, I gotta say hi to Amanda. Hey Amanda. Hold on here. Uh um I just said it in Eva. I can't believe this. If we missed any questions, yeah, we're gonna um, um re please re restate the question in caps. Yeah, we'll see if we can get catch it. Uh, I just saw Kitty is saying Skype is getting uh, sticky lately. Kitty on YouTube, this is way at the top of it. YouTube, um, I'm not kind of sure too much about this guy, but Cliff High, C L I F F I G H I G H. As all of you know, I'm up. If it's out there, I'm watching it when it comes to alternative media. He said that. Um, something about the sun or something and it's doing something with all these waves and it's making things like that go wacky me i don't know i don't know who it is or what they're doing all i know is many many years ago and i'm old enough to say decades ago i did read a report in a reputable magazine like time or newsweek or something that the United States was very dismayed to find out that China had something that they were vibrating through the ground that they claimed could come over here and disturb us. I don't know. I'm just telling you. So anything like, um, he said something like the sun's in a solar sun. I don't know. But it's on there. It's one of his most recent videos. Okay. Now we're going to entertain questions, but that might have something to do with it, you know, as far as that is concerned. You, you know, you can't trust anybody these days. We do a V show together. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Dirt Patch. No, no problems. And we got to send you about that stove, too, right, sweetheart? Yeah. Well, never leave. Yeah, yeah never, the stove. The stove. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, V yeah. show. Okay. So, anyway, um, simply, bees are extremely active in our garden. Yeah. Um, I know, Raquel, are there a lot, Raquel, that's going to be, anybody that has a question, I'm going to just, uh, yeah, you two, uh, uh, two family, we'll, we'll team up, we'll do that. And um, hopefully Jason and hopefully um, Honey Tree Farms, because any, you know, the different areas, the different locations, some things are different. Some things are the same. Swarms. Uh, the um, pros and cons of a queen excluder. I mean, when you're out there in a bee suit and it's 90 degrees, you'll put anything, I mean, you'll just do whatever you have to do right there. And we got those, you know, those um, suits that supposedly aerate you. No, no, no. Where's my fan? I wear um, one of these in my bee suit. You hit it in it keeps me cool and I have my water and everything and that's why I take my raid <laughs> because I don't really
literally spray them unless if I leave there and I take a walk and they follow me, I turn around and give them a couple hints. But I swear they, they can read your mind. I, and you have to get used to their body language. Like you have to know that when you approach the hive, if they're all lined up, if they're all lined up, 10 or more, that's not like, oh, isn't that cute? That's like they're going to attack you. And you need to smoke them or um, do something with um, your spray water. Okay. When we, um, oh, this is what I want to tell you about the study. Next year for the study. And the study doesn't cost us anything. They send you everything you need, your labels, your bags, everything. Um, they want to invite out-of-state beekeepers. So, and, and they don't care what you got. Okay, they are trying to expand it. This year is run through the Cornell Extension. Um, Cornell University, Cornell, whatever. New York Bee Wellness. Yeah, New York Bee Wellness. Uh, we gave you that site. It's a good site. Next year, they want to open it up to beekeepers out of the area and because they figure the more information, the better. And it's the Varroa mites. I'm looking, I'm looking. What about tending bees real early or at dusk? It's, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, what about tending bees real early or at dusk instead when it's cooler? Oh, no. Okay. Well, you can try it. The, <laughs> the, um, the general yeah. guidelines are that you should go into your highs between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Why? Um, the reason is that most of the foragers are out of the hive at that time, right. going, flying, getting stuff. Uh, it means there's less bees in the hive so that it's a little bit easier for you to work the hive. Okay. Once you get to where it starts to get dark, the bees are all back in the hive for the most part. And um, if the closer you get to dark, you're putting yourself in jeopardy. Um, the bees will will um, react badly mm -hmm. if you're trying to work around a hive and it's dark or really close to it. They become very defensive. Genetically, I guess, through millions or hundreds of thousands of mm -hmm. years, um, what they found the predators that attack them though, come at sure. night. What? Someone had a question. Go ahead. I, I will go predators ahead. come at night, like bears, um, skunks, raccoons, etc. So they are extremely on alert at dark. The guard bees mm -hmm. in the front are on high alert. They've got M16 submachine guns, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, uh, napalm. Yeah. They're ready to go. So you do not want to be around the beehive, at least not working it, uh, when it's getting dark. So, yeah, it means you're out there in the hottest part of the day. Right. So you take water or your favorite beverage, hopefully not alcoholic. Okay, so, Peller, do we have Italian bees? Oh, boy. <laughs> we have some Italians. We have some Italians, some Carnolian. Um, swarms which two swarms one from last year we don't and one from this year we don't know what they are that's my cuckoo clock that's my five minute warning to all oh, the attack bees uh i think that was it attack bees those are the russian bees what we are hoping for is um and i'm on the lookout for them are a lot of people are going to the um queens and i mentioned this uh one of our streams that are hybrids that will um, lay eggs that are res less res more resistant to disease. We got some bees in here from Louisiana. That's not you know out that way. And the South is known for hive beetles. We almost never see them. And now we have hive beetles in three of these hives, and and we're not happy. Um, for those of you that don't know, hive beetles. How they how they operate is uh, they drop through your screen board and we have screen boards here, meaning just on the bottom of the hive, just the hive on the bottom, so that um, there's airflow coming up to the hive. They drop the larva through. The larva goes into the ground and hatches down there, and then crawls up into your hive, and that's your cycle. Um, hopefully tomorrow. We'll have something to show you next week because we ordered these little zippy bags that go between the frames. And they say that you can put in um, 
regular cooking oil and it will attract them. No, I got the regular stuff that you put in there and uh, we're going to be putting those in the frames and then on the bottom of the where the dirt is the best thing i've read is this uh one lady said she put sheets of metal on the bottom so that when the larvae drop they have nowhere to grow so that's our solution but we're trying to get a handle on it because when it gets warm everything just explodes i mean that's the thing up here you know you live on a farm up here and we have 19 acres and it's just just the two of us like this song you know we've got five acres of grass we have all this these trees and things that are blooming and blossoming and it's like oh my goodness and the bees are just you know bees don't wait so they're our priority you know everything else has gone to see and taking um some advice from the, the cases i thank you case i can't remember his last name honey uh, and my sister up in this area too, where it's been raining like nothing. Um, and our stand up planters, whatever, we're going to have some tomatoes and some peppers and a whole bunch of flowers and call it a day. I mean, we have a well put garden of berries. We're going to leave those there. Anything that's in the ground, okay, and that's coming back, perennials, they're fine. Like we have lupins. I have, do all of y'all grow lupins? I don't know if they're that familiar here in this. Any other questions? Any other questions? Got we got two minutes, okay? We're not, unfortunately, going to do a giveaway. I will get those other giveaways. I have your name. I have what you want. We will next week. Maybe we'll do two next week to make up for this week. No, let's um, not overdo it. Okay, let's not overdo it. We'll have two. Um, before I go, I want to thank the moderators and um, invite you all to go to Simply 7 living right after us and nicole my prayers and good thoughts continue to be with you she's been through quite a bit any other questions she's going to stick with her she's going to stick with her fur babies i'm just okay um uh, we go okay any other questions no problem claire you rock honey Okay, um, any other questions? Hey, Bob, I didn't see ya. Okay, hi. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, I, I can't, I'm just not gonna be working. I wanna get on, get on board with this. And, you know, there's a lot of work to be done with them. And um, like I say, we spent the last two years planting everything around here. No pesticides in this area, thank God, because of all the few fruits and vegetables. We ourselves use soap and water. Okay, we're going to go and give you all time to get to Simply 7. Bye. Okay, bye. Good night. There's another thing here. Here we go.